Well, good morning, Internet. Welcome back to the Doomed Rat's Nest. This was really annoying. So we still got some gases in here. They're almost gone. But if you notice this steam, while I was building this, this bit of insulated tile wasn't there. And my dupes were picking up water and dumped, dropped a couple of bottles of water in here. And so there was high steam pressure, high heat. Trying to work around that was just dupes getting scalded and incapacitated. And yeah, it, it was just annoying. Not good video at all. Just had to wait. It was so hot in here with so much steam pressure that I couldn't build any pumps because the pumps would just immediately get broken. And so much room that, yeah. Anyway, so I just have been slowly digging down, sweeping all my material over here as I dig down, and now I'm down to the bottom of it, finally. For those of you who don't know about Visco Gel, because in Spaced Out it's so hard to get, we don't use it nearly as much. By having it three tall with this gap, then dupes can run through and they won't exchange heat. If this was only too high, if the dupes were carrying something hot, they would immediately vaporize it. And it was so hot of other stuff over here that I put in this Tim shift plate and this is just polluted water coming from my generators to keep it from vaporizing. Otherwise, it's a you know, perfectly normal little base. I did sweep all of my gas into here and oh my god. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That's 110, 120 tons of natural gas are in there. And some of it is quite hot. So to deal with that, it's sitting on top of this plate. But if this had anything to interact with, it starts overheating. You can see it's 500 degrees. So there's some super coolant over here for everything else. And then there's a gap right there. So that way, uh, nothing interacts with it. And so far it seems to be doing okay. We're shipping over stuff I need for the next project. Other weird stuff has been happening. That right there is a piece of frozen oxygen. Nothing down here has ever been frozen. Like just now the base is getting down into the 20s. Everything down here was in the thousands. You know, minimum a thousand. Most stuff was up in the 1500 mark. But there's a chunk of frozen oxygen. There's also a chunk of ice. A chunk of ice. Ice sitting in magma. Sometimes... Let's see, was that mineral? No. Sometimes the game does weird things. Like, how? How is there frozen ice? Uh, yeah, I just don't know. But it should be if I put liquefiables in here, then they should sweep it. And then dump in the magma. The rest of the base, I mean, it's been like a hundred cycles of me pumping. This side I'm almost done with. I don't think I'll bother taming these. I've got 20 some odd tons of tungsten over there. The water planet has been settling down. It was the last episode where I cracked it open and it got up to like here. And we're back below that pump and we're just pumping a regular 10. We are providing water to... Yeah, we're providing water to the fire base. I was providing water to here, but eh. This, this base has got plenty of water. I should probably hook up the other base to it. I did crack this open before, and so we've got 200 kilograms of natural gas stored in here, because why not? Oh god, I gotta kill my slicksters again? I keep killing them. I've got 8 million calories of barbecue over here, and there's just too many of them. Ah, awful. And you are sending over Wolframite. And I want to hook the water back up. Yeah, so that's what I'm working on. We're getting this pumped out. I would really like for this to go dormant. 
So what if I sweep you guys at a seven? I don't know exactly what will happen. I really thought that this would be the source of my steam, but this little thing has worked quite well and has melted everything in here. And now it's down here. <laughs> I'm assuming that will change. I, I have no idea. No idea if that will melt or what will happen. But it's now in the liquid cover. So why do I want this to go dormant? It's so I can build around it and not have to worry about it breaking. But I think I can start to build everything else without opening this up. So pardon me while I pause and then I'm going to reload into a different map. And here we are. Uh, this was sent to me by Mikhail. Mikhail? I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing your name right. Or not, I apologize. He said he found it somewhere else on YouTube. This is a full-throated Niobium Tamer. And different than the other ones I've seen, so I thought I'd try to build it. Obviously mine will be flipped the other way. But the idea is... Oh wait, I've got to... This. There we go. So, with horrendous automation, we... What are you made out of? Tungsten? Yeah, most of this stuff is going to be made out of tungsten so it doesn't melt. So we have a hyd hydro sensor that starts everything, runs through a filter gate for five seconds. That filter gate then starts working all the doors. This sensor is then set to make this door work as well. This is diamond, because diamond has a melting temperature up 3900, won't melt and two full tiles of steam to absorb the shock of this thing erupting. The doors then cycle, move a little bit of niobium up, over and out. This door looks like it's to get all this preheated. So you say if yeah, as long as you're below that, if you're above that, then it will close for a little bit so you don't solidify the niobium, but you get it down to just close enough to so not break everything. We've then got another tile of steam and another temp sensor that runs the auto sweeper. The auto sweeper feeds into the rail, cools the niobium down through ice. That ice is being cooled by polluted water, easy enough. And then it's just about cycling the doors, so everything opens. Now the doors have to be something that won't melt. So Wolframite, 2615, again that's why you need this right where it's at. Just out of curiosity, I have not looked at the doors in a while. So Thermium, Niobium, Wolframite. So Thermium melts 2676. Niobium 24 and Wolframite 29. Yeah, so that's the idea. So I need to come. What I'm thinking is I'm going to build this with the top open and build all this underneath. Yeah, I think that'll work. Build all this underneath. So it just pours down onto something. Now these tiles are insulated, but then once you get out of direct contact, then you don't need insulation, even though I have it. Yeah, so I'm now going to reload my map and we'll start building this. Now, really unfortunately for me, the blueprints mod right now is broken, so even though I have the blueprints mod, if I try to make one, it just immediately crashes the game. But I'm thinking if I just do... 
like that, right? If I come over two, okay, and I should have diamond, yes. Okay, so let me get this queued up and then I'll figure out how I gotta get water into various things. Yeah, this is definitely gonna take some doing because I've also got to get all the ladders out of the way and swept up, or the Niobium will vaporize the rock that they're made out of. That will make some stuff out of thermium, some stuff out of insulation, a lot of stuff out of ceramic. Uh, it's going to be a fun time. And i got to get water into it and hopefully not melt everything. On the plus side while I'm building this, my gas pressure seems to be coming down quite fast now that the sour gas made it up to this top bit. So hopefully these things will actually come down and get down to a vacuum here soon. The pressure is low enough I could probably put in pumps, but at this point, just why? watching the gases and it looks like there's little bits of vacuum forming. Yeah, there are. So I guess this stuff is right at that super small amount and so we're getting... Alright, who... Really? With all the ladders around, that's the best... Dupes, man. That's just what they want to do. They just like swimming in magma. But yeah, if these are flipping to vacuum, then it should just start popping right through all of that. I've been waiting for this for so long. <laughs> it started. Come on, hook all the way around. Just want all these gases to disappear. Oh, this was such a big service area. Once a little, little area starts, as it spreads, it should accelerate and hook around and get everything. It really has been like 120 cycles of me dealing with this. I mean, this sour gas was here when I came back to this base. <laughs> I've just been fighting around it. And here's to hoping that I won't have to deal with gases in here ever again. And I just, where I start building this, I realized that I don't want the night open to come off the right side. I want it to go off the left side. So we'll see on this side, have it pour off this side and then go this way. Just means I'll have to get these ladders cleaned up and out of the way. Looks like I'm almost done with the magma. What I think I'll do with the rest of it is solidify it. I think that'll go faster. So let me get rid of the pumps. And then I'll start putting in temp shift plates to get it to chunkify. And of course my dupe wants to stand in the magma because dupes are the smartest. You just keep getting out of there. The supplier dupe will run back and forth. It's the builder dupe I want on top of the ladder. That's perfectly fine. As long as it keeps chunkifying, I'm okay with it. That's also why I'm building these out of insulated rocks, so that if they do melt, it's not a big deal. T 
To me, it seems faster than trying to pump it all. Actually, you're probably going to cool down enough. Just a conga line of dupes building Tim Shift plates. Cleaning up the ladders, and now I gotta figure out where all the automation goes. Second layer of tiles are in to protect from radiation. Insulated tiles are just about in, and I can sweep all this up. Just trying to make the work area slightly better for the dupes. Okay, I think that is all the automation and I think I can build it all. Yeah, because with that ladder I should be able to get access to everything. I just already know what's gonna happen. This is gonna go dormant right when I get all this finished. That's just the way my life is. But it looks like I've got all the automation in. I don't have any of the settings put in yet. But it looks like everything is connected. So I've got a screenshot of the other automation just to <laughs> see. But yeah, looks good. Building this in debug mode, I'm sure, is much, much simpler, but not as much fun. Alright, a few more bits of pipe. And then it's super cool, it will flow. I think I need another couple of bottles. I put this ladder in, so if they do drop anything, it ends up on this cold abyss light and not over here. And so far, they haven't destroyed everything. And I'm going to try to drip some super coolant over here. I think in the map I was given, they use liquid uranium down here, but I think super coolant will work. Follow me for more ways of screwing this up. How'd I do? Oh, just short. That's too bad. All right, so a little bit of super coolant over here. We'll try to get a couple of drops in here. And then I can put in the conveyor loader, and then I can start to fill you up with water. And that should do it. So I've got super coolant here, cooling the conveyor loader. Super coolant here, cooling the auto sweeper. really don't want that blob right there, but I can't think of a good way of getting it out. Hopefully it won't matter. Okay, and with you getting water put in, I'm gonna open this. I'm gonna save. And with the save done, we're gonna try to get this swept out. Okay. Joshua's a pretty good researcher. Let's see how quickly he can get it done. Now it seems like I'm doing the reverse warm up of using the aqua tuner to warm everything else. 
Which is gonna take a while, because there is a thousand there and two thousand there of water. Well, as long as I can get it up into the 90s, hopefully that'll be close enough. And look at Joshua go. Oh, I gotta... No, I don't think databanks can melt. Databank. Nope, databanks cannot melt. I was worried they were made out of plastic. Way to go, Joshua. Ooh, I got 24 cycles and 11 until it's active. So, I'm going to pause you and fill this up with water. I'm bored and clicking around on things. Uh, that frozen oxygen is still there. <laughs> it's sitting in a pool of liquid copper with a whole bunch of stuff that's a thousand degrees. And here's this little bit of frozen oxygen. <laughs> anyway, I just thought I'd point that out. We've got another eight cycles until this goes off. I was just clicking around on things, sweeping stuff up, and I'm like, oh, hey, <laughs> there's still frozen oxygen sitting over here. Uh, what are you down to? Five. So this is almost going to freeze. I can set... No. Well, that's what I have this set to. So negative ten. We want that to be ice. I was so close. I was sealing this in. I didn't have enough insulation for these two tiles. I don't think I need nearly as much. And if you look at the design Mikhail shared with me, the net, the volcano was down here. So I'm definitely using more insulation than I needed. Unreachable food. How did all... How did all of your food rot? Oh, because of that little bit of carbon dioxide. Oh, that's annoying. Okay, well, let's stop shipping anything. And I should be able to mop that, and then I need to get that out of there. Alright, bit of cleanup later. I killed a couple of puffs I had running around. Oh, there's still one over here. Oh, there's a whole bunch of puffs up here. I was about to kill some. Oh, and a Drucko. Okay, like, I thought I'd been printing out puffs. Yeah, we already cooked up a little bit of barbecue. I don't really think I need to feed the tree anymore. I'll send over food for my massive barbecue planet if I need to. But that's enough for one cycle, and then they'll kill these. The saves are very slow. <laughs> okay. And where's my cook? Oh, he's on break. But we, we now have... Yeah, they all can get one meal this cycle and then he'll come through and cook the rest. I just realized over here, I've still been making insulation. So there is another seven tons of it. If I need it. So yeah, I don't need to feed the tree. And now our food's coming back up. There was another Dreco hiding over here. Oh, now I'm back to waiting on this. Do we get another six cycles? I figure I could train Rudy up to be... A decorator, put in some blocks. It also means I can analyze this artifact. Oh, it's an actual useless machine. <laughs> and it's got automation. And it's 1200 degrees. All right, so where does that put me on achievements? Seven. So I still need to find three more terrestrial artifacts. Ah, oh, that's too bad. 
Just out of curiosity, how much power am I wasting? <laughs> I mean, each time I start up a new base, it's like, and there, and there, and there. I mean, I don't get the big power spike, but these are each of the bases running quite a bit. I really like that they gave that an animation. Those things are fun to build if you've never, you know, seen one in real life. You can order them online, they're not that expensive, and they're kind of fun to make. I am definitely not burning off natural gas fast enough. This is what, 200 tons? 50? 100? 50? 200? And another 13. Wow. And then I'm running it all through here and just dumping the carbon dioxide and the hydrogen into this little hole in this side of the map. I've just been seeing payloads land. I thought I'd look at that and like, oh yeah, in the time it's taken me to build this, I've built up even more gas storage, which means these plants I haven't been to yet. That one you can't see as well, but like this. That's got to be two or three hundred tons of natural gas. Just kind of sitting around. I wonder where that water's coming from. Did, did this planet always have water on it? I don't know. Thank you again to Mikhail, hopefully I'm pronouncing your name correctly, for sharing this. I hadn't actually seen a design like this before. We're just about to erupt. I got this stuff up to about 240, which is all I could really get out of my aqua tuner with the steam turbines turned off. Maybe I could have gotten a little bit higher, but, you know, it's survival. Let's see what happens, whether all this just chunkifies, or if it actually gets up to a high enough temperature that... It can run. And I can hear my dupes up here uh, whacking away. Right, let's go one notch slower and see what happens. God, that's 3,000 degrees stuff. Oh, well, it's making a nice little dam, and then now it flows over. Okay, that I'm okay with. Because that means it's not flooding everything else over here. Yeah, this has got to absorb a lot of heat before this will melt. This stuff freezes at 24. Yeah, it's coming down to that quick. Do you make bigger chunks when you freeze? No, it's coming in off the top. Okay, well, that was incredibly anticlimactic. So next time this erupts, it's going to go dormant. <laughs> okay, well, that was a bit anticlimactic. Well, thank you all very much for watching. Uh, I'll see if the next eruption does anything, and we will see you next time.